Hi guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and I'm going to be making a video on Pokemon. And the video is going to be on advanced strategies. So Pokemon Go, it's this new app, everybody's playing it, and a lot of videos have come out on giving beginner's tips and all that type of stuff. I'm going to assume that you're level 5 or above, and that you understand you know, the basics of this game. So we can delve into the more strategic and you know game elements because it's not that much of a child's game there actually is a lot of strategy and tactics that you can employ in this game so before we get into them i just want to introduce um, defense and attack of your pokemon so your pokemon has a type so in this case we have a scyther who is a both a bug and a flying type and it has an attack which is steel the steel wing is a is another type so your Pokemon could, in a sense, have four different types. Now, why are types important? Because certain types have different advantages and disadvantages against other types. For example, look at this game matrix. It is quite intense, but what we have here is all the various types, and the, the green represents that it's got an advantage, and red means it's got a disadvantage against those other types. Now, I have looked at it from a game theory point of view, trying to see if there is a dominant strategy, you know, is there any criteria that you can try use to, to simplify this. The maths gets quite messy. Um, I mean, even I was looking, grass seems to be quite weak, fire and ground seem to be quite strong, but that is not incorporating the probability and the likelihood of coming across these various Pokemon. So, as far as trying to gamify or, or build a strategy around this game matrix, that is quite difficult. Instead, by advanced strategy, I'm going to recommend that you focus on two things. Okay, and the first thing is your XP. So XP allows you to level up. The more XP you have, the higher your level is, and the higher your level is, the more Pokemon and the different varieties that you're going to see. And that's the point of the game. You've got to catch them all. So the higher your level, the more likelihood you're going to see Pikachu and Eevee and the rare Pokemon. So you want to build up your XP. The second thing you want to build up is something known as Stardust, which is quite new to me. I was like, well, what is the Stardust? But Stardust, along with candy, can build up your Pokemon and make them stronger. And having strong Pokemon is very essential when it comes to taking over the gyms. Okay, gyms are these things that pop up on the, the map and they're very important. Okay, when you see a gym, Gyms are important opportunities because not only by fighting them do you gain XP and all that type of stuff, but also if you hold a gym for 20 hours, you're going to get rewards. And the rewards you get are Stardust and Pokemon Gold. Pokemon Gold you can use at the shop to buy various items, and the Stardust you can use to make your uh, Pokemon stronger and take over even more gyms, which will allow you to get even more Stardust every day. So... How do we take over gyms and how do we defend gyms? Because that's, that's the whole thing is attacking gyms and defending gyms. And the best way to do that is to team up. Okay, this Pokemon game, just like Ingress, which is kind of based on, it very much is a social game and you're going to be way more effective when you're in a team. Okay, you need to team up and then together you guys can go to gyms and take them down way quicker. I mean, let's say you come across a gym. First thing you want to do is see, okay, this is a pincer, he is a bug Pokemon. Memorize this, uh, this matrix or, or have a copy with you at all times. Uh, pincer is a bug Pokemon, so you'll see that fire, what else hurts him? Fire, flying, and rock. Yeah, those three are going to be very effective against uh, pincer. And I mean, by using this game matrix on the gyms, it's going to be very easy to defeat them. You know, you're going to feel like a Roman. We came, we saw, we conquered, we took over all the gyms. Okay, but that's the easy part. The easy part is taking over the gym. The hard part is defending a gym. How do you defend a gym? Well, first of all, I'm going to show you how not to defend. Okay, this is this is the worst thing you can do in Pokemon is to go and put a Magikarp with a combat power of 10 in a gym. Okay, this is terrible. And it's terrible for two reasons. One, it's going you know, to upset your team because anybody else who's going to want to come and train at this gym and try to boost its prestige is going to take forever because every time they beat this Magikarp, because the combat power is so low, it's only going to give a fraction of prestige, 
which means it's going to take hours and hours to level up this this gym. Also, I mean, you can see there I was. I was I was only level eight, so I didn't know what I was doing. But I was like, yeah, I've got my got my first gym. I've got my magic carp. But I mean, if another Pokemon comes, I mean, one hit and the magic carp dies, which means it's going to be very very easy for the other teams to take over a gym that is defended by a magic carp. So don't don't defend it with a magic carp. Okay, now that we know what not to do, I'm going to talk to you guys about what you should do. I would recommend putting in Pokemon that only have one type. So uh, let's say that Scyther, it was both bug and flying. I would recommend against using Scyther as a defending Pokemon. Rather put a Pokemon that just has one defense. This is going to make it less uh, vulnerable to various uh, attacks. I'd also then recommend that it has a two type attack so that it will be more effective from various other Pokemon. You know, if it's got both uh, Water and Psychic, say like uh, like Slowbro, then, you know, it's going to have advantage against, say, Fire Pokemon and other Pokemon such as a Poison one, which has got its weakness to, uh, to the Psychic power. Okay, so that's what we want. One type defense, two type attack. And what you want to do is get in your team and the order that you place the Pokemon. So, uh, like I said, I'm assuming you're level 5 and above, you understand how the gyms work. Once the gym prestige hits a, another level, you can then place another Pokemon. And in order to upgrade the prestige, you need to battle the Pokemon. And you only get, only for me, I don't know if this is a bug on my side, but I only get one Pokemon and I have to take on all the other Pokemon in that gym. Which makes it a little bit difficult. So what I would recommend is the first strategy, if you're just starting off, and you're with your team, is let the weakest player put in their Pokemon first, okay? This is going to make it much easier for the other players to beat that Pokemon and build the prestige. They're going to be building it slowly, but they're going to be able to be building it, and then they're going to put in the second strongest Pokemon. And this will allow the strongest Pokemon, the number one, to come in and have a good chance of beating both of these Pokemon at the same time, which will increase the prestige quite quickly. So then you put in the strongest Pokemon. However, this is an advanced video and I'm going to show you how you can increase the prestige even more efficiently and even quicker. And that comes to strategy two. And what you do here is you put in the strongest Pokemon first, okay? But now we need to play that type matrix that we've been looking at. So for this example, put in the strongest Pokemon and make him fire. Then put in the weakest Pokemon and make him ground, okay? Ground has an advantage over fire, and because he's got a, a smaller combat power to the fire Pokemon, it's gonna improve this prestige very, very quickly. And then, for the, second po uh, for the final Pokemon, you then put in a water one, which has an advantage on both fire and ground. And this is gonna let you build up your gym's prestige very quickly and allow you to put in three strong Pokemon without having to go through the whole revivals and potions and doing it, you know, numerous amount of times. Because remember, Pokemon, like Ingress, which the game is based on, it kind of all comes down to managing your resources. You want to manage the amount of Pokemon you have, you want to manage, um, you know, the amount of potions you use, the amount of revivals you, you consume, all this type of stuff. And for this reason, I would highly recommend against trying to set up and defend a gym in the waterfront or some hot uh, tourist attraction place. As you can see, we've got a gym. There's a whole bunch of Pokestops around. People are putting lures out. It's a very festive area. There's a lot of tourists coming over here, which means when you have this gym, I don't think you're even going to last one hour before another team is going to come and take it down. Because there's a lot of people in this area, you're going to lose that gym very quickly. I recommend getting your team and going to some weird distant location. You should be safe because it's a group of you guys, um, you know, safety first. And because you're in a group, set up a gym or, or build up a gym that's in quite a remote location where there's not a lot of traffic um, and it makes it quite hard for the other teams, you know, they really have to go out of their way to try to take down that gym and you've built it up quite nicely. So it is going to be a bit of a hazard for them. And that way, you're going to keep the gym for the full day. You're going to get the benefits, which you can then use to build up more Pokemon to take over even more gyms. 
So, wow, well, <laughs> I've spoken quite quickly, but in a nutshell, I've spoken about gaining XP and saving Stardust are the two things you want to focus on. Then I highly recommend teaming up um, in order to attack gyms in such a way you can manage your resources. And then finally, I spoke about the best ways on how to hold gyms so that you can get even more resources so that you can repeat the entire process again. And there we have it. Uh, thanks guys so much for watching and job. Yeah, I'm wishing you guys all the best with Pokemon Go. It's a lot of fun and I hope you guys have really great memories with it. I'll see you guys next time for my other videos. Cheers.